Nick.com. So it's come to this. Ever since I started reviewing obscure Spongebob games, there's been one that I've gotten a good few requests for. The Clash of Triton was a Spongebob PC game released by Chewy Software and was even part of the Nick Arcade once upon a time. It was based on the Spongebob episode of the same name, but here's a fun little piece of trivia. Up until recently, I had never played this game or even seen any gameplay from it. To add to it, I didn't see the Clash of Triton episode until years after it aired. From what I've heard, one thing is certain though, people really like this game. I have heard nothing but showers of adoration for it whenever I've seen anyone talk about it. There might even be a group of Spongebob fans that congregate in an abandoned building somewhere and worship the Clash of Triton. Okay, maybe not, but a lot of people have told me it's really good. I've been told there is a chance I will rank this game higher than every single AWE game. Yeah, whoa, settle down there. You're saying this is better than Lights, Camera, Pants and the movie on PC? That's a big statement to make, so we'd better check it out. First, let's give some background. The Clash of Triton special involved King Neptune having a birthday celebration where he was sad because he missed his son, Triton. He banished Triton to an island because he was too powerful and couldn't control his powers, so SpongeBob goes to the island and releases Triton. Chaos ensues. I eventually saw the episode, but I kind of just forgot about it over time. It just wasn't an especially memorable one, even though it brought back King Neptune and expanded on his lore. In his original design, nonetheless. But regardless of whether you found the special memorable or not, you can't deny the marketing team was giving it their all. Not every Spongebob special got a full video game release. Chewy Software is also a relatively big company. They've made games for many children's franchises, so they seem reliable in the industry. So let's check out The Clash of Triton and see if it lives up to the reputation it apparently has. The game begins with some cool music, then we're brought into the story by means of comic panels. Birch Perkins here live, following the aftermath of Bikini Bottom's destruction at the hands of King Neptune's son, Triton. Hey, I wasn't expecting this to be fully voiced. That's awesome. Maybe this will be account of the day's events. What can you tell us, boys? Oh, they only had the budget for Perch. So Triton has been released and is ruining his father's birthday by unleashing havoc on the city of Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob and Patrick go to save King Neptune and his wife, Queen Amphitrite, but they are foiled in their attempt. Okay, game over. That's the end. Nah, they find Neptune and Amphitrite's tridents and become super muscular. Hold on, is that a He-Man reference? In a SpongeBob game? Triton turns Bikini Bottom into Mount Triton and makes a bunch of Krabby Patties into an evil sentient army. This is clearly an awesome action sequence that's super intense to read through. Or not. Seriously? Dead silence? They couldn't have at least thrown some sound effects in there? It's kind of awkward with Perch being the only sound you hear during this entire sequence. It's a little uncanny, actually. I understand if they didn't have the budget for extra music, but I'm sure they had a whole library of destructive sounds to choose from. So you set off to save the city, and Perch Perkins talks about how hopeless you are. This is a running joke throughout the game. In the first stage, you're given a tutorial that tells you the rules and controls. You're SpongeBob, and you have to restore the buildings Triton overtook. How do you do this? Well, by destroying them, of course. Yeah, you climb the buildings and smash the Z button to break different parts of them until they fall. Then the original building comes up and takes its place. This is more or less what you do for the entire game. It's mostly a button masher at the start of it. Well, I can't say it isn't unique, but that's a pretty wild idea for a game. How did they come up with it? Better yet, what does it have to do with the Clash of Triton? When in the episode did Spongebob have to climb buildings and destroy them with his giant fists so other ones could rise and take their place? I mean, I guess it wasn't the easiest episode to adapt, since the action sequence didn't actually last very long, but still. It's just a surreal idea to come up with off the top of your head. I wonder what went down in the writer's room. You gain experience to get what they call smiting points, which you can use to improve your stats. 
You fight these paddy minions along with the buildings, and the basic ones are fairly easy. One thing that's strange is that the buildings are clearly in the background while you're in the foreground, but you still have to climb them from the foreground. It can also be hard to tell how to climb sometimes. It's shockingly difficult to grab onto a building while you're jumping. You also have to be a little specific when grabbing on or punching. The hitboxes are really small and hard to get used to. Did I mention you're being timed? So once you complete the tutorial, you're taken to the stats menu. You can upgrade your speed, jump, health, or ultra move. You'll need a fair balance to win the game, so yes, this does require farming. Not a whole lot, though. You can play as either Spongebob or Patrick, who each have four different outfits with their own special abilities. These can be upgraded by giving experience points to the Ultra category. You have their regular muscular designs, but you also have their godly ones, this nasty one where Spongebob burps, this Kung Fu Patrick one, this WWE Spongebob one, and this Patrick dance outfit. The Ultra moves have mostly the same effect, so it's basically whichever outfit you prefer. You hold down the Z button, which is also the attack button, and release it when the meter in the corner is full. Then you do a special attack which sometimes deals extra damage. Other times it misses for no real reason. Speaking of which, let's talk about some of these controls. By pressing down and Z, you can actually eat the Krabby Patty minions, which can give you more health, a time bonus, or even invincibility depending on which one you eat. Only one downside. It's the same command to stomp your foot. The unintentional challenge of trying to eat the patties is accidentally smashing them instead. The key to do any sort of attack, charge your ultra move, and eat are all the same button. All I'm saying is there are a lot of keys on this keyboard for basically everything to utilize the Z key. Again, the controls aren't even the most responsive. There were several instances where Spongebob just wouldn't jump when I told him to. Don't you hate it when fictional characters don't listen to you? Later on, you meet new enemies such as these helicopters, but they can be real annoyances. Check this out. It's so hard to hit these helicopters at the right angle. It seems inconsistent, actually. These burgers that throw pickles at you can also be really annoying. Just be sure to upgrade your health so you don't worry about it as much. There's also the behemoth that shoots ketchup at you, but it's not too bad. But when many enemies are on the screen at once, it gets really messy. You can try to eat them in abundance, but it's hard to control which ones you eat when they're so close together. You might need extra time, but you can't reach the one carrying the clock. Now let's get on to the stages. Right off the bat, the developers made a strange mistake. Rock Bottom is the first section of the game, and they consistently refer to it as part of Bikini Bottom. I thought it was common knowledge even then that they were different cities. I mean, the name similarities should be enough to give it away. Rock Bottom as an alternative to Bikini Bottom. The sections themselves are fairly easy if you know what you're doing and use your upgrades right. But it's the later ones that might start to induce a little rage. For now, enjoy toppling buildings into one another and creating a domino effect. You have challenges that you can get kudos for if you complete them, and a lot of them involve setting off a chain reaction of building destruction. It's satisfying, but toppling a building requires you to hit it on one side before it just crumbles normally. All the while, the enemies are hitting you and knocking you away from the side you're trying to reach. It can get really annoying. Every section ends with a boss fight. The first one is this giant Krabby Patty monster named Crabzilla. You don't fight the boss itself, you just destroy the buildings and Spongebob shoots the sky and destroys it. Then you get another Perch Perkins cutscene. Monster, Crabzilla seems to have cultivated himself a huge following among the youth of Bikini Bottom. Stores around town are quickly selling out of all Crabzilla merchandise. We asked one fan, why the obsession with Crabzilla? His answer? He's just cool, dude. So, what's the joke? The next world is Glove World. The different worlds give you different backgrounds, buildings, and sometimes new enemies. But look at this. They're throwing so many enemies at me that I can't reach the buildings. Interesting obstacle, but it looks a little messy. Like they Gmod spawned a hundred zombies at once to clutter the map. From here on out, the bosses are King Neptune's assistants from the episode. They've been turned evil and you need to fix them. Some of the boss fights can be fairly easy, but hey, I'm not complaining. No word yet on how this tragedy will affect the sales of Shapeshifter's new CD release, Sonic Trio Presents, three-part harmony, one-part discord. Okay, that time it was a little funnier. Felt a bit more natural, though the punchline was a tad too long. I'd also like to mention these spike enemies that are nearly impossible to kill. 
Look at this. Stepping on these guys one time is enough to drain a good chunk of your health solely because it's hard to get away from them. They become more and more frequent as the levels go on. The next section is Goo Lagoon, which has buildings for some reason. I guess Plankton's plan from that one episode fell through. After the boss, you enter the path to Mount Triton. You get this cool volcano in the background. I found the boss fairly easy here, even if the ice shards he rains on you can be a pain. This was also where I was able to fully upgrade my Ultra move. Once you have it at 3, you can climb to the top of a building, hold Z until all icons are filled, then you'll do a smash downwards to break half the building. Two of these moves will take a building down. These are almost necessary for the final section of the map if you don't want to have a really stressful time. I also recommend getting your speed to the maximum because it will decrease the amount of time needed for your Ultra to charge. Upgrading jump can make you jump higher when you hold the spacebar, but it never really made a difference for me. I couldn't get it to work most of the time. This game has a bit of an issue with unresponsive controls, but anyway, we're almost to the end. In the final stretch, you work your way up to Mount Triton to save the Krusty Krab and everyone else. There's also something of a WWE reference here. The devs must have really liked wrestling. You work your way through this fairly normal-looking town and reach Triton as the final boss. You just have to take down two small buildings and one big one to win. Again, make sure you have maximum ultra power and maybe maximum speed, too. Try not to be overwhelmed by the enemies down below, eat the Krabby Patties whenever needed, topple the small towers into the big one, then climb the big one and use your max ultra to bring it down. It isn't the hardest thing in the world, but it has potential to incite rage when the enemies down below catch you. It's hard to get back on the buildings once they start hitting you with everything they've got. So once Bikini Bottom is saved, King Neptune is happy because he knows he'll have a worthy successor. He and Triton hug as Mr. Krabs orders you to pay him for all the Krabby Patties you ate during the quest. Ain't that the perfect analogy for our economy? And that brings us to the end of Clash of Triton. So, what do we think? Better than Lights, Camera, Pants in the movie? Well... I don't get it. Maybe this works as a stress relief game with how much you break buildings, and it can be enjoyable for some, but this game isn't for everyone. There isn't enough variety to keep me interested for as long as the game is, and the controls needed some serious work. It's unique, yes, but is uniqueness always necessary? I'm fine with a basic platformer or a basic puzzle game if the game itself is intriguing enough. Being unique isn't always necessary to make a good game. I love the AWE point-and-click games, and those all use mostly the same resources. I can respect budget limitations, but this game had a lot of little issues that could have been resolved with more love and effort. I respect the idea and the creativity behind it, but this isn't something I would want to play again after finishing this review. That being said, I respect that it's a challenging game with a lot of unlockable features. If you like cartoony violence and non-stop action games, you might get some enjoyment out of this. Not the best Spongebob game I've ever played, but if there are people out there who really like it, that makes it worthwhile. Now here's another bit of trivia. This wasn't the only Clash of Triton game to be released. Another one called Spongebob Squarepants and the Clash of Triton was released as a Flash game on Nick.com. Supposedly, it's very similar, but has some notable differences to this one. Tune in next time and we'll check it out. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.